Science could already show that a creator had less to do than perhaps meets the eye. Let me present one tiny technical argument this evening. How much electric charge is there in the universe? The answer is none. We know experimentally that there is an equal amount of positive and negative charge, which if summed together gives zero charge overall. At the creation, no charge separated into opposite charges. Nothing separated into opposites. Secondly, and more pertinently, how much material is there in the universe? Another way to answer this question is to ask how much energy there is in the universe. For Einstein showed that mass and energy are equivalent. When the sum is done, and that involves adding together all the masses of all the protons, all the people, all the priests, all the planets, all the stars and all the galaxies, as well as the gravitational attraction between them, the answer is close to zero. I suspect that as observations are refined, the total will approach zero. There is no energy in the universe. Nothing did indeed come from nothing. Science shows that the universe is in fact a big confidence trick. There is truly nothing here. All there is is a separation of opposites. Now what that argument shows is that the event that took place at the creation is very much simpler than one might think. God, if he had to do anything, did not have to make anything. All he had to do, if he had anything to do at all, was to separate nothing into equal and opposite components. Now that doesn't solve the problem of what went on at the creation, but it makes creation ex nihilo a far simpler process than you might have thought, for literally nothing had to be made. That argument at least diminishes God's role. Now I could also sketch in an argument that suggests how the reorganization of nothing could take place a causally. There is, of course, no causality before the arena of space-time has been established, so it would be absurd to project backwards our familiarity with causality in our current arena and use it as an argument for God in an arena when space-time did not exist. No one knows how space-time came into being a causally, but there are hints. I would like to say what I think happened, but happily Dr. Craig has done that for me. But quite honestly, I don't think it matters what I think went what went what I think what went on at the creation, because it would be just pure speculation. Speculation without the rigor of mathematics and observation is as syrupy a bog as religion. All I want to leave you with is the realization that the universe is an engagingly reorganized form of nothing, and that speculative a-causal events are capable of seeing it come into being without intervention. No God was needed to make the universe, or even to make it happen. My argument diminishes the role of a creator God to zero. Notice that he actually agrees with my two premises, that whatever begins to exist has a cause, and secondly, that the universe began to exist. Why then does he conclude that the universe does not have a cause? Well, did you catch how radical his view is? Because he doesn't really believe the universe exists. On Dr. Atzin's view, nothing exists. So it's not that something came out of nothing. He literally believes nothing exists. As he writes in his article, we, like mathematics, are elegant, self-consistent reorganizations of nothing. Now, let me make three responses to this. First of all, it's a total misunderstanding to say that because the negative energy balances out the positive energy, that therefore there is nothing. That's as illogical as saying that because I have a certain amount of debts and I have a certain amount of money, that therefore I have zero money. It, it's just illogical. Even if on balance it balances out to nothing, there's still negative energy and positive energy. It doesn't mean that nothing exists. Secondly, I would point out that you still need a productive cause for the universe 
even if it's the case that you don't need a material cause for the universe. Christopher Isham, who is the leading quantum cosmologist of Great Britain, points out in his article, Cosmos and Creation, there is still a need for ontic seeding to produce the energy, even if on balance it is not. So you still need to have an ontic seed, a, a beginning, a cause, to bring the positive and negative energy into being, even if on balance it's not. But finally, as I say, his solution, I think, is simply absurd. His solution is that nothing exists. And that's simply uh, absurd. I at least exist. As Descartes said, even when I doubt that I exist, who is there to do the doubting? I doubt, therefore I am. There must be something that exists. So I hope you un understand how radical this alternative is. If honestly, the, the alternative to belief in the existence of God is to say that nothing is real, nothing exists, then I say let those who decry the irrationality of belief in God be henceforth forever silent, because nothing could be more irrational or implausible than that.